Okay, one question I keep getting from my students is how do I find the apothem? So I'm going to go through the three steps of how to find it. The first step is to find something called the central angle. Now I'm going to do two examples with you here side by side so you can see how it changes a little bit from polygon to polygon, but the general steps are still the same. Here I have a regular, I know it's not perfect, assume I have a regular pentagon where all the sides are six. So I can say six, 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 right? Then I have a regular octagon where all the sides are ten. I'm trying to find the apothem, and what is the apothem? Well, if you put a point in the center of a polygon, the apothem is a point that connects that to the middle of one of the edges, so one of the sides. So the first step I like to do is I like to find the central angle. First step, find central angle. Now what do I mean when I say find the central angle? Well, you start in the center and you go, well, what kind of angle could I make with this polygon? Logical thing to do is to connect the little points on the end. And believe it or not, that is a central angle. They're pretty easy to find. Since if I were to go all the way around, let's say I made all my little triangles here, and these are all central angles, and since it's regular, all of these triangles are the same size. If I go around in a circle, how many degrees will I go through? I go through 360 degrees. That's true whether it's a pentagon or even if it's an octagon, it's still 360 degrees. Um, or even if it's a 45 gon or any type of polygon. So all the way around is 360 degrees. The next step is how many triangles do I, can I make? Well, in the pentagon, I could make five. In the octagon, if I connect them, I will make eight. So the number of triangles I can make is equal to the number of sides. So the easiest thing to say is divide by the number of sides. All right. For this problem, it's going to be 360 divided by 5, which is 72 degrees. 360 divided by 8. Don't get confused by the 10. This is the number of sides and that will be 45 degrees. All right. The 10 has to do with how long this is. It doesn't really have to do with how big the angle is. The second step we have is we make a right triangle by cutting this uh, triangle in half. So make a right triangle by cutting central angle in half. All right, so, and the reason I'm doing that is the apothem connects the center to the side. It cuts this side in half, so I'm trying to get to this apothem side. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a triangle here. This angle right here, if it was 72 degrees, it's not 72 degrees anymore. It's 72 divided by 2, which is 36 degrees. So that's 36 degrees. For this one, it was 45. So now it's even smaller. It is 45 divided by 2, which is 22.5 degrees. All right. The apothem, remember, is this side. So if I wanted to kind of highlight that, this is the apothem. This is the apothem for this polygon. All right. Uh, I know the angles. I know, I'm looking for the apothem. I actually still know a side. If I cut this side six in half, then what I'm going to get is three. The way I got three was I said six divided by two. This side, if I cut it in half, I'll get five. And the reason I got that, ten divided by two is five. All right? The last step is to use a trig function. Use a trig function. to find the apothem. By the way, some people say apothem, some people say apothem. I've heard different pronunciations. I haven't heard the official. I kind of like how apothem sounds, so I keep using it. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a trig function, and 
what I'm looking for here, I know the um, I know the side opposite. I know the side opposite, right? Which is this one right here. And that one right here. If I go ahead and get my math chart and look at it, which I have here, and I don't. Just a second. Got my math chart. And I'm looking for the adjacent and the hypotenuse, uh, opposite. The only one that has adjacent and opposite is tangent. So that is the function I'm going to want to use. I'll do it in a nice bright color so you can see it. So tangent of the angle, tangent of this angle, of the angle, and I'll just say angle, equals opposite over adjacent. It's the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so that's the general rule from your math chart. Well, the opposite side for the first problem I'm going to do tangent of 36 equals 3 over, and what I'm looking for is A. Okay? Tangent of 22.5 for this problem equals 5 over the apothem. Now, in both of these problems, when you're doing it and you know the edge, you're almost going to end, always end up with this apothem on bottom with the tangent function. So how are we going to solve that? Well, the best way to get your unknown out of the bottom is to cross multiply. So you put a little 1 underneath here, a little 1 underneath there, and you go A times this equals that times that. A times this equals that times that. So let's start here. A times tangent of 36 equals 3. Okay, I'll do it over here. A times tangent of 22.5 equals 5. Okay. I'm trying to solve for A. Since A is being multiplied by something, the only way to do undo multiplication is to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by a tangent of 36. The tangent and the 36, the angle, go together. You can't just divide by tan on your calculator. If you press tan on your calculator, it will say, okay, tan of what? Give me a number. So don't separate the tangent from the number. Tangent of 36 divided by tangent of 36. Hmm, what should that be? Tell you what, I can do that on my calculator. Tangent of 36 divided by tangent of 36. Hmm, oh, that's one. Doesn't that make sense? Something divided by itself is always 1. So if I said tangent of 22.5 divided by, make sure you close that parentheses, divided by tangent of 22.5 is also 1. Okay? So no, when you divide both sides by these tangents, they become 1. They go away. Oops, I forgot to put it on both sides. There's tangent of 36. Because remember, if I do something to one side of an equation, I have to do it to both sides of the equation. All right, so now I can say A equals 3 divided by tangent of 36. And if I get my calculator, I'm finally ready. I know most of you have been dying to grab your calculators. It doesn't kill you to wait. 3 divided by, here, let me go ahead and do it here. 3 divided by tangent, there's a tangent button, of 36. Enter. Now, is this right? One of the things you always need to make sure of on these calculators is that they are in degrees. So let me hit mode, and I am in degrees right here. If you're using the TI-84s, you can see there's radian, there's degrees. We always want to be in degrees. I can hit clear to get back out. So 3 divided by tangent of 36 is 4.1, I'll go to the hundreds, 4.13. You always want to go at least to the hundredths on these because um, if you stop really short, you're still going to be missing a percentage of your answer, okay? And that will come into play because apothem plays into the area. So then this next one, A is 5 divided by tangent of 22.5. How much is that in my calculator? 
5 divided by uh, 10, 22.5, enter, 12.07. If I wanted to go to the thousandths, 12.071, 12 and 71 thousandths. So just to recap, the basic steps, this is, this is how long this 4.13 is this leg right here, all right? I'll just highlight it in red. This 12.071 on bottom is how long this leg is. That's called the apothem. So what we started by doing was we first made a central angle by dividing the uh, 360 degrees by the number of sides. And then we make a right triangle from using that, but half of the central angle. So, oh, I like to have my little right angles on my right triangle. So I cut it in half, the 72 degrees becomes 36 degrees, the 6 becomes 3, the 45 degrees becomes 22.5 degrees, the 10 becomes 5. And then the last step is using a trig function, setting up the ratios, use your math chart, and solve for your unknown. First cross multiply, and uh, then divide by whatever's multiplying the apothem. And use your calculator.